This is Christian with another MVP Buzz Chat interview, and I'm here talking with uh, Tatiana. Hello. Hello, hello. Good afternoon, I should say. It's uh, late afternoon for you, so Happy thanks for Friday. joining. So for folks that don't know you, why don't you give us an introduction, who you are, what you do, where you're located? Yep. So Tatiana Radova. Nobody calls me that because people really struggle to pronounce my name, so I have made it really simple. Everybody calls me Didi. What do I do? So I am a senior consultant with Incremental Group. Incremental Group, we have offices in a few different places across the UK. I'm based in Glasgow because I think that's the best city, obviously. Um, what do I do? So pff, loads of different things. I think that's probably people would agree is the beauty of consultancy that you never, you never ever have two days that are the same. So I tend to do everything from pre-sales when our pre-sales need a bit of help. So that's demos, um, meeting customers before they even know they're a customer, um, trying to understand what they need, doing demos, showing them what what the potential is. Then when they move into delivery, I help with the whole project life cycle. So we build what we need to build for them. And then sometimes I also help with the support side of things. Um, so really the whole life cycle. Very but cool. I think that's what keeps it, yeah, that's what keeps it exciting to be honest. Well, that's something that I, as a, as a philosophy throughout my career has been, you know, I, I never want to be more than, I always want to be customer facing in some yeah. degree of that, because the further you, you get away from the customer engagement, the quicker that you lose a sense of what is real out there and you, you buy in too much of your own marketing and, you know, that kind of, side of thing. So having those regular <laughs> interaction points. And that's, I think that's, so at uni, I did computing science and management. And I think even then, that was exactly that what I was thinking, because I knew I didn't want to do purely computing science, because computers always make sense. And that's good for some time, but then it gets boring. So that's why I also did the management, because people are the opposite. People don't make sense. So for me, <clears throat> that was exactly the right balance between people and technology. You know, it, it's funny, it's my, my degrees are in, so business degrees and MBA, and, but my degrees are in marketing. And Ooh. in my almost 30 years of working, I've spent maybe three, four years of all of that career doing marketing type functions, and, uh, but always in technology. I, only one time did I go work for a company for a year as a contractor, uh, as a consultant uh, in a, for a non-tech company. And I didn't like it. <laughs> but see, you say that, but I think I think you have actually spent much more time using what you have learned in your marketing degree, even when it's not for a marketing specific task, because everything in life is marketing. Oh, oh I completely Every, agree. It is, everything it is, is your brand. And there's, there's certainly a, a lot of room for it, it, doing a similar role. So I've had the titles of uh, not pre-sales, but like a, like a solution architect type role. Mm -hmm. I've been evangelist and chief evangelist for a number of ISVs. There's a, you know, evangelism is, is kind of in my blood, that, that side of it, which is all about helping translate. And this is kind of a marketing function too, of taking very technical topics and breaking that down into consumable chunks of information to help people that are not, you know, living and breathing the tech every single day. I like that role of helping explain tech to non-tech people. What I didn't like was being surrounded by and being like the only <laughs> technical person in a non-tech company. It was frustrating. Well, somebody at work actually introduced that idea that we should have a tech test. So essentially, it's the same as like the driving test that we do. Like but competency. Technology. Right. Yeah, right. so that we shouldn't let people get a job or get to a certain level unless they have passed that basic technology, technology well, that, test. I mean, that certainly happens with like technical roles. There's a lot of companies that do that will actually throw out tests. I know that like Microsoft, for example, some interviewers as part of that, that interview loop process for those that are interested in going and work for Microsoft is certainly at headquarters, how they were doing that would they would send out these 
you know, math problems, send out you know, technical problems, have that solved before they even bring them to Redmond to interview for those roles. But I think that, so there are some folks, some good friends that are big on the idea of, you know, technical competency. And it's not so much a, like to keep somebody out of a role, but even information workers need to have a regular refresh. And so there's nothing wrong with doing kind of a, a level set, a check and see, you know, what have they learned? What have they unlearned so that an organization knows what they need to go in and reinforce? 100%. And I love the word unlearned. Yeah. I'm definitely going to use that. Sounds like the technical term for it. Well, that's, I like that because, uh, <laughs> because it, it, what it says is it explains, like, I did learn it. I did know it. Like I've unlearned everything about, uh, so Unix, I you know, took a couple of years of classes that worked that back when I was working in data warehousing and knew all that. I don't know any of it now. I don't remember any of it. it shh, it's gone. I'm glad it's not just me. I think so the time. <clears throat> so, so it's, it's reassuring. Yeah, no, I, I think it's a good, because it, again, it reinforces that it was learned at one time. I, I, that, I did that for that role, but it's no longer needed in my life, you know. I, I'm sure I, it's just like riding a bicycle. I'm sure it will come back exactly in the right time if you needed it. Well, the other thing I want to point out is that, so I had my math teachers, uh, you know, in, in uh, middle school and high school that uh, were, like, did that phrase that is like, you're going to use this throughout your life. It's a lie, people. There are so <laughs> many roles like I have not used. Like I had my last uh, courses, of course, for my MBA, I had my finance and statistics classes was the last time I picked up a physical calculator <laughs> and uh, did any kind of math of any kind and have not used it in my career at all. So uh, I, I do agree with you on a professional level, but my dad is a mathematics high, high, high university teacher, so uh -huh. higher math. So I feel like I have to, to just show the other side of this just from a personal level, because I do think I'm the same. I went to a mathematics school, then I went to a mathematics higher school. I did a lot of maths throughout my whole <clears throat> um, education. I did some math, maths at uni as well. And I, even when I agree, I don't think I have used any of the formulas. They're, they have all faded away. They're long forgotten. But I think the combinatorial thinking that you get um, <clears throat> by learning that is something that, that I still use on a day-to-day -day basis. And I don't think people always draw the parallel between how you can solve some life problems and doing math at school, but I think there is a very strong, strong connection. Well, there, there's, a, I think it's, it's hard for a lot of students that are going through and seeing the world through a certain, certain way and saying, I'm struggling with math. I'm not good at this thing. It's like, there are so many different roles that are out there and in technology, or so we're talking about my, my undergrad is in marketing and then I have a business degree on top of that. And, and so I've had, you know, while I did the minimum possible, on that, I just did what was required for the program to get the degrees because uh, I just didn't enjoy it, which really, if you get to the root of it, psychologically, is I had a really bad math teacher that mm. made me hate math because I hated him. Blame so, it on the teacher. Sounds, it, sounds fair. It was uh, so that I, I know and I know that. <laughs> It's like, it doesn't matter. It just kind of broke me of that. And I was in advanced math classes when I was younger. But all right, we don't need to go into that so much. That's a that's a different path. But you never know with these interviews. So kind of what are the stuff that you focus on? What what's kind of your passion right now with the technology? Yeah. So I last two years, three years, um, I've been mainly specializing on dynamics 365 marketing. Um, and because I think the more you do something, the more it comes your way and the more opportunities like that you attract. So that has kind of happened. Um, but when I'm not doing that, I do the whole I Microsoft Dynamics 365 suit. Clearly, we do sales as well. We do customer service. Uh, but if I had to choose, my favorite ones would be Dynamics marketing and things like customer insights, for example, because that's another product that links really nicely with the marketing product for that targeted segmentation as well. So I have to say you're the first person I've talked to that uh, besides talking with members of the the Dynamics marketing product team, seeing them at shows like uh, two years ago 
at the Inspire the Partner Conference, I spent a lot of time over at the booth talking with the 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 Dynamics 365 mm -hmm. marketing team to understand, you know, what Microsoft is doing. Like obviously, you have the leaders that are out there, the Marketos and and and, and HubSpot, and you know that are at the, for the mid market up to larger company. You have all of that. And Microsoft doesn't appear on that list <laughs> of, of known and top as far as, as penetration. So what, what's kind of different? Where does it fit? What's the story for Microsoft Dynamics? Marketing? I think, and I can tell you only my opinion, but yeah. I think it's a matter of time because it always needs to start somewhere. Those products have been about on and around and about for quite a long time and i think that's probably one of the one of the reasons why i like dynamics marketing so much because when i started three years ago or so it was such a i don't want to call it basic but it was it was a product very early on in its development so it was missing quite a few very important fundamental features but just seeing how much it has evolved in three years i think it's definitely one of the products that are gaining popularity more, much more quickly and market penetration than the other ones that have had it for a while. Well, that's so it's a I, matter that, of time. That's, I completely agree. There's a matter of time if Microsoft makes the investments and and pursues and goes. I mean, it, it is. Look, it's positioned because it, and, uh, and and maybe you got to give an overview of what's included within that. Um, but because of the Microsoft's approach to kind of data science and analysis and being able to like the analytics back end, the possibility, but also to be able to plug in and leverage LinkedIn acquisition. That's one of those things where when Microsoft acquired LinkedIn and people said, why does this, this doesn't make any sense. I said, are you kidding? Is it for on the dynamic side, be able to plug in and leverage that data and read that data and be able to leverage that from a marketing standpoint from, uh, you know, I mean, anyway, there, there are that was so, your marketing degree talking. See, yeah, but it's the rich data that's behind it that no yeah. other company has that rich business user data. We're not talking about Facebook API getting data from the consumer standpoint, but this is, uh, you know, much more, uh, uh, you know, clean, relevant data to from a business standpoint to these marketing systems and On the data point i think that's why i so marketing definitely a favorite but customer insights is another yeah. product that i don't think has got as much as attention as it probably should have been Agreed. because you probably have seen one of the new features around data enrichment and i think it's exactly that concept that you were just talking about getting more data and better data or even better using the data that you already have as a company but uh, plugging some gaps and enriching that data with with external sources and that's what customer insight is really good at and then plugging that into a marketing system and using it that as an entry point i think it's coming very close to closing the whole cycle. I, I, I agree. I think, you know, without all the emphasis to talk around and Microsoft is making moves around Microsoft Viva, we talk about the three other components of Viva and we talk least about the insights portion. So everybody wants to talk about, uh, you know, data connections, which is that front page, the intranet page that integrated in of SharePoint into Teams. Uh, you have the learning component, of course, uh, and then you have topics, which is really cool. There's a lot to that one, but then no one's really talking about the insights part of that. I think it has the potential to be the biggest component of Viva because when you start talking about understanding how people work and then leveraging that and building campaigns, whether internally or externally around that data, that's going to be so important. So important. It just absolutely agree we just need to make sure because I, we and we have heard that for from a few customers we just need to be careful we don't cross the line between important and creepy because i think <laughs> that's the technical term creepy. <laughs> no but i think it's important and i think it's important when we even when we have those conversations with customers sometimes when we show them things they get so excited because we are showing them things that they have never ever been able to do or even think Think of doing right. so they always go oh now we can do this and this and that so it's always important to say yes you have a lot of possibilities but how about we start small and we see where we get to 
and just let it evolve naturally and organically rather than surprise your customers with 20 emails a minute when right. you haven't done anything like that for the past three three years let's say well there's so that's another well, I, th there's a that's a whole uh that's that's a it's a worthy life pursuit to uh try and ease customers into being <laughs> yeah. <partnered> to. <laughs> but i think that's how you gain their trust you yeah. want to let them explore you and want, want to let them get adventurous and excited but you also need to have a strict hand and make sure that you tell them when they're crossing maybe there's an opportunity like for for microsoft could have for like new when that's like a transition you could set it up within your profile that the system actually throttles what you can do that only <laughs> lets it kind of trickle out if it's like a net new thing like again the company can decide hey we want to be careful we don't want to just barrage our entire list with all of this marketing campaign we want to trickle out and then ramp it up slowly organically over time you know i because I, I know that's that's an approach that's why it's it's the the key to these marketing systems is that it's more personalized for the recipient of those messages and it's going to be more actionable and more personalized then there's it's more likely that you'll have a conversion uh, activity they'll do something they'll click that link they'll open that 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 file they'll respond and buy something if you're just spamming the same message out to a hundred thousand people then don't be surprised if nobody responds because it's not aligned with that's what the marketing systems that's what it is that's why it's so important to understand how people are working uh, 100 and the one thing to add to that so personalization <clears throat> absolutely crucial and another concept that i think needs to be considered on the back of this is different channels because it's really important to have your message personalized it's really it's much better to say hi john and then tell them something about the product they have used um, but if you do it over a channel that they don't have access to well then that's not very useful so picking the right channel for the right message is i think the next logical step to this one and the integration in with the sales side, and this is again another disconnect for so many companies out there. And we've all received these phone calls from the salesperson and be like, Yeah, I downloaded that ebook like two months ago. I've seen it already. So, or, you know, and so I was always impressed when a salesperson, you know, contacts me. Not that anybody likes getting called by a salesperson, cold call, but where they're able to say, like, you know, hey, so I see you downloaded this. Um, and that you also participated in that webinar two months ago on this topic, we had this new thing coming out. So they already know what I've not yet consumed. And mm -hmm. so, and I, and I know I, I, where I am, I can envisualize it when they uh, envision it, when they call me, like where I am on that customer journey, where they're contacting me for that next step uh, around that. This is again, for folks that are in the marketing side of things. Yeah, we do think about this. We know where you <laughs> are and we have a plan for for each of those things uh well but... one cool thing that salespeople have started doing is sending personalized videos so i think that's that's that that makes the whole journey a bit more a bit more pleasant i know you said you don't like them but i think they're also making an effort to be a, a bit less uh, well annoying it's well the thing that annoys me is when i get called for and they clearly don't understand it's like it's like oh we saw on your linkedin i'm like yeah did you look at my profile at all <laughs> yes. i don't do that at all or that's not <laughs> my function at all why are you calling me and I, that, I just look at that and say bad marketing or lack of effort around that um, i actually appreciate where it's plugged whether where they're plugged in and they know where i am on that flow and and i just and i try to be nice and, and say well look i'm I'm not looking to make a purchase around this. I was investigating this so that they can go back to their notes and fill that in. Don't harass Christian, you know. <laughs> not that it that it only means when they when they enter that in the system that not to harass a customer, it's only for one to three months. And then if you're lucky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, very, very cool. Well, so for folks that uh, want to get to know more about you and find out like where your blog is and wh what you're doing out there on social, what's the best way to reach you? Yep. So I do have a blog. I'll give you the details. We can post it under the video afterwards. But LinkedIn, Twitter, I like both. I'm probably a bit more active on LinkedIn as well. But I think it 
I don't think, I don't even know why. I think I just get a bit more uh, better engagement on LinkedIn. So that's where I put a bit more of my time. Um, but Twitter is fine. My handle is uh, my name and surname. I know you guys will struggle to, to, to spell it. So we'll, <laughs> we'll put the details. It'll be up on my blog post as well. Yeah. Links to everything. So if you go to buckleyplanet.com, you'll find kind of the summary of this that'll have the video and the podcast link. And then links to all of her social details as well. So if you're watching this on YouTube or via social channels or Facebook, then you can go over to buckleyplanet.com and you can find the, the recording with all the info. So. so for everybody watching out there, do keep in touch. It doesn't have to be only if you guys want to know about marketing or customer insights. If a lot of people have been getting in touch recently and saying things like, I'm, I'm giving my first presentation or I'm speaking at my first event, do you have any pointers? So anything like that, absolutely happy to help as well with anything you want to chat about doesn't have to be Microsoft or Dynamics 365 specific. That's right. It, it could be about martial arts, for example, you know, be taekwondo, we, preferably. We, we didn't even get into that. So I I have, know. Uh, you know, so my my background is uh, not as impressive. <laughs> Well, what's, what's your, what's your martial art? So I did Kenpo for years. I was a wrestler. Uh, and then, so Kenpo was actually started by an American, by a wrestler that created this. I, I was drawn to it because it had a lot of moves uh, that were of grabs and throws that were akin to wrestler. It just felt more natural to me. Um, I did that for a couple of years. I, I got up to a, 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 see, I almost got my brown belt. Mm. See, almost got my brown belt. Uh, but then I moved and so left my dojo and stopped doing things. So. Not too late. You can go back and oh, get I know. It's it. Ne it's never too late. It's uh, it's not an interest anymore. So. Um, yeah. Yeah, Taekwondo has always been a passion. Love it. it. It just, it's such a good way to decompress in distress after the work day. I don't know how, I, I become a worse person if I don't go to training. Well, so I know I that in, so for those who are watching, in her MVP profile, she has her favorite kick. <laughs> I do. <laughs> well, that's an important information. What if people want to know? Now they know how to find out. Well, but now if you have a person that's in the MVP community and they're aware of that and you get into a life or death fight <laughs> situation, they know your favorite go-to kick. That's not good. <laughs> But it doesn't mean that I cannot use all of the other ones. <laughs> I, know, I, know, I know. I'm going yeah. to let you take that out of your arsenal. So I don't, I don't know. That just seems uh, like, uh, you know, it's, it's unfortunate that you shared that information. But maybe it's a preventive technique because maybe it's a very difficult kick. So maybe them knowing that I could hit them with that kick, they're like, oh, well, better not get in that fight. So maybe it's actually good for them. And they're looking for that. And you just do a straight punch and take it. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Oh no, I'm sure we can figure it figure it out just by talking. That's right. That's or arm wrestle. We can do arm wrestle as well. I guess that. Talking through problems. That's an interesting concept. I don't know that I like it, but I it's an interesting approach. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks so much for your time and and uh hope to see you uh as things kind of open up. Hope to see you over in that part of the world sometime soon. Absolutely. I'm sure it's such a small community, so I'm sure we'll see each other soon. All right. Well, we'll talk to you soon.